so I'm back for my course uh, with Dr Bethany Hayes at the College of London Medicine, a uh, really nice venue. Um, but I've been back for about three weeks now and I keep promising that I'm going to send you guys all the information that came from it. Uh, but it was really heavy stuff and I'm working through it all. So I'm going to write some papers on all the bits that she talked about, endometriosis, PCOS, um, all the kind of perimenopausal, menopausal stuff. Um, so I'm going to write some individual bits on that. Uh, but for now, I thought I'd get this blog out to you just with the main bits. Um, so Dr. Bethany Hayes, OBS and Gynae Consultant from America, she's really leading the way in terms of functional medicine. So um, there was lots of interesting stuff, but the, the main bit, the interesting bit for me, was that she talked a lot about cortisol and stress, which is all I bang on about in my clinic, as you guys all know. Um, so I'll say it again that I tell <laughs> all the stuff I tell you guys. So pregnenolone, that's your precursor hormone to cortisol and DHEA. Cortisol being your stress hormone, your inflammatory hormone. DHEA being your precursor hormone to all your other sex hormones, so your testosterone, estrogen, all of that business. Um, so if you're in a very stressed out situation, your body ultimately thinks it's in some kind of war zone. So it won't make DHEA, it will make cortisol. Um, so it's prioritising survival over reproduction, really. So it's a good thing. You don't want to have a baby in a war zone. But what your body doesn't appreciate is that actually you're just stressed out um, and probably wanting a baby is stressing you out more than anything else. So what we need to do is prove to our bodies that we are just going to chill out a bit. Um, when you are pregnant in these early stages, you have to eat when you're hungry. You have to sleep when you're tired. Um, and if you don't, you, you just can't function. You can't do anything else. So any kind of mothers will know this. Um, so what you need to do is prove to your body that if you are tired, you will sleep. And if you are hungry, you will eat. Because otherwise, it's just going to think that you're not able to do any of those things. So it's not going to provide you with a baby. So, um, you know, sleep was a big one to come out of it. I know this seems really commonsensical, but eight hours is really your minimum amount of sleep that you should be getting. So everybody needs to just focus a little bit more on their quality of sleep. Um, exercise, you don't want to be over-exercising. Anything over 90 BPM is using your adrenals. Um, so adrenals are part of that whole cortisol system. So you really do want to look after your adrenals, not over-exercise too much. Um, you also do just need to look at uh, inflammation in the body. So cortisol is an inflammatory hormone. Uh, so anything that you can do to limit inflammation in the body is good. Uh, there's a supplement that I'm getting a lot of people on now, uh, which helps the immune system uh, to clear inflammation. So really good hormone. There's lots of uh, research uh, been done with that particular hormone. Um, and it's all really positive. So I'm hoping that's going to work well in my clinic. Um, I know for some of you that have done the lab tests, that, um, that I provide in my clinic that, don't, that do actually kind of go through, show you your levels of cortisol, progesterone, estrogen, DHEA. Um, I think you've all been quite shocked actually at how high your cortisol levels are, even when you haven't felt particularly stressed. Um, so it's quite worthwhile having those tests done just to see where you are from that perspective. Then we can look at whether we do need to really limit your cortisol or whether there's another issue with either your metabolization of estrogen, progesterone, um, sometimes that can be where the issues lie. So it, that's been quite interesting. Certainly Dr. Hayes uses a lot of those tests uh, with her patients and finds them really useful. So it's good to know that I'm, uh, I'm doing the right thing from a diagnostic perspective. Um, another thing that she talked about a lot was uh, toxins. The, our exposure to toxins now is huge. Um, there are toxins in the air we breathe, food we eat, the water, the products we use. It's really depressing when you think about it. Um, but we just need to limit our exposure to that stuff. So look at the products you use. Um, try and eat organically as best you can. Um, 
I think it's something like women put 500 chemicals on their faces putting a, a, a face of makeup on in the morning so you know we're already exposing ourselves massively uh, before we even start the day uh, let alone if you live in the city um, there's loads of uh, pollutants out there so um, if you get yourself an air purifier that certainly helps um, but also the importance of having organic cow's dairy um, so animals will store the toxins that they cannot metabolize into their fats um, so when we're drinking non-organic cow's dairy we are essentially drinking the toxins that that cow couldn't metabolize uh, which means that we won't be able to metabolize it either um, and interestingly too if you're breastfeeding your baby um, you're giving your baby the toxins that you can't metabolize. So that's not to say don't breastfeed. Uh, breastfeeding is always the best, but um, you do just need to be extra careful about how many toxins you are exposing your body to. So that was interesting. I've made all those changes myself, uh, changed all of my cleaning products, um, trying to eat as organically as I can. Um, so it should make a big difference. Uh, autoimmune problems are huge now. Um, that's because our immune systems are sort of on overdrive um, a lot. She talked about habitual miscarriage um, and the immune system. So what we really need to do for the ladies that are struggling from that perspective is that we need to keep our inflammatory markers down. Um, when an embryo gets to the uterus, there's a bit of a conversation that happens in terms of how inflammatory are you going to be to my uterus um, and if the answer is too inflammatory then um, that uterus is going to call in cells that will fight off that embryo um, I know it's not very pleasant but that's that's the immune system's response to inflammation because your system is already quite inflamed so what we really need to do is work on inflammation cortisol comes back to the same thing um, there are certain supplements again that we can use to bring down that inflammation so that's something I've been talking to a few of you about um, another thing in terms of miscarriage that, that I hadn't really gone into so much with you guys quite interesting um, that sperm um, actually does go and make the placenta uh, which was new to me and for a fertility specialist I kind of thought it was something I should know uh, but there was a room full of doctors and nobody else seemed to know it, so I don't feel quite as bad about it. Um, but yes, the sperm will make the placenta. So for those ladies who are struggling with early miscarriage, uh, we've known from a Chinese medical perspective that miscarriages around sort of seven weeks tends to be a, a, an issue with the sperm. Um, and this was sort of corroborated by Dr. Hayes. Um, but actually, you know, those early stages, we do need to look at the male partner um, a little bit more. So I do treat couples in my clinic, uh, but this is something that I'm going to look into a little bit more. I feel that actually there's a bit more work that could be done. Um, also, the importance, again, of uh, methylfolate over folic acid for men and for women. It's something that I've put my women on and talk, talk to you girls a lot about. Um, but boys, I don't talk to you so much about methylfolate. Um, our bodies are struggling to metabolize folic acid, which is sort of the chemical form of methylfolate. Um, so actually a lot of that folic acid isn't getting through um, and it's stressing our livers out by trying to metabolize it. So I've been talking to you guys for a long time about using methylfolate over folic acid. Um, that Dr. Hayes also talked a lot about that. Um, and agreed that that really is the way forward. So for anyone who is still taking folic acid, talk to me about methylfolate. Um, it, it really is the way forward now. I know a lot of GPs are talking about it too, um, but it's something we need to look at. So the key points really uh, were bringing down inflammation, cortisol and toxins. So toxins are inflammatory, cortisol is inflammatory. Uh, so we really need to look at changing that stuff. Meditation, walking, sleeping enough, eating when we're hungry. It's all really easy stuff, but it's stuff we don't do. Um, so get that into our lives a little bit more. I will be back with some more information when I can. But for now, that was the main stuff. I hope you found that useful.